Hi, today we're going to be learning about stem and leaf plots. First, let's quickly take a look at what stem and leaf plots are. A stem and leaf plot is a special graphical representation of numerical data. It's kind of like a bar graph or a histogram because you can see the distribution of the data visually, but it's special because you can see the actual values as well. Okay, so let's have a look at an example of a stem and leaf plot. So over here, I've got a stem and leaf plot showing us the scores in a video game. Okay, now if I were to show you a bar graph for the exact same data, it would look like this. Okay, so you can see over here, the bar graph has got intervals from 210 to 219, 220 to 229, 230 to 239, 240 to 249. And you can see that the bars have got a frequency over here of two, this one has a frequency of six, this one has a frequency of seven, and this one has a frequency of four. Now let's go back to that stem and leaf plot. Okay, in the stem and leaf plot, I also have the data grouped into intervals. So here I've got an interval. It's represented by the 21. We're still going to talk about what that means a little bit later. Okay, but our first interval has got two values in it. Just like over here, this bar had a frequency of two. This has six values in it, just like over here, our bar had a frequency of six. This one has seven values in it, and this one has four values. Now you can count the values in each of the intervals to find out how many there are, but you can also just look at the intervals in comparison to each other and see like this one has the least, this one has the most, you can see this one has got more than that, and so on. So you can see the distribution of the data using the stem and leaf plot. But you can also see the individual values. Each of these digits over here represents a value in the data set. Okay, now before we look at how to actually, okay, now let's have a look at the rules that you need to follow when you are making a stem and leaf plot. First, you need to make sure that there is a title. Just like for any other representation we do for data, we need to make sure that we say what it's about. So in this case, it's the scores in the video game. So whatever the data is about, you need to give it a title. Then when you're placing the numbers into your stem and leaf plot, Say you have the number 218. The way it works is the last digit in that number is going to be a leaf. Okay, so it's going to go into the, the leaf part of your stem and leaf plot. And that, so that's the last digit. It is going to be a leaf. The other digits in your number, whatever they are, are going to be the stem. They're going to go into the stem part of your stem and leaf plot. So the other digits are the stem. So when you have your number, the last digit is going to go in the leaf section and the other digits are going to go in the stem section. Okay, then you also need to make sure that your leaves are arranged in ascending order. So from smallest to biggest. So you can see over here is five and then eight. Two, seven, eight, 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 eight. Zero, two, three, four, nine, nine, nine. They're not all randomly mixed up. They are in ascending order. Also, you need to make sure that there are no semicolons or commas or anything in between the leaves, okay? And finally, you need to make sure that your leaves are arranged in columns. This is very important. Otherwise, you don't get the benefit of it being like a bar graph because if it's not arranged in columns, you won't be able to judge based on the, the space that they take up to see what their frequency is in comparison to the other groups in the stem and leaf plot. Okay, so those are the rules that we need to follow when we are making a stem and leaf plot. Now let's have a look at an example where I'm going to show you how to actually do it. Okay, so over here, a class wrote a test out of 100. The results are listed below. Okay, so we've got all of these numbers over here. These are the results that they got when they wrote this test. So we need to represent the data in a stem and leaf plot and then answer the questions that follow. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would do this. Okay, so I'm going to start off by giving my stem and leaf plot a title. So I'm going to call this test marks. Out of 100. Okay, just so that when somebody's looking at it, they know what it's all about. Okay, so now when we're going to make our stem and leaf plot, the first thing you need to do is remember the stem is telling us what the intervals are. The numbers in the stem basically tell us how many tens there are in each of the values that each of the digits over here represent. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I need to look at the numbers that I've got over here. 
the values and I need to see what is my smallest one. In this case, the smallest one is one. Now in the number one, there are zero tens. So I'm going to start off my lowest interval is going to be zero tens. Then I'm going to have one ten, two tens, three tens, four tens, five tens, six tens, seven tens, eight tens, and nine tens. So the stem, the numbers in the stem tell us how many tens there are in all of the values that we're going to be putting over here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my data and I'm going to look at where to put the data in the stem and leaf plot. But before I do it neatly, because remember, one of the rules is that they have to be put neatly in the stem and leaf plot in ascending order. Okay, now it's going to be difficult to do an ascending order straight away because this is all mixed up over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a rough version on the side over here. I'm going to do a rough draft of it and then I will transfer it and put it in here in ascending order when I do my neat version. Okay, so for my rough version, I'm just going to go through each of the data values and I'm going to just write over here where they belong, which, which interval they belong. Okay, so 86. So remember, the last digit in our number is going to be a leaf. The other digits, in this case, there's only one other digit, is the stem. So this 8 tells me where it's going to go. It's going to go in the 8 interval over here. This is the 80s interval. Okay, so this that's 86. So I'm going to put a 6 over there. Okay, because the 6 is going to be the leaf that's going to go somewhere in here. Then, next one, I'm going to cross that out to say I've done it. Next, I've got 61, so it's going to be 6, and then the 1 goes over there. Then I've got 70, so it's 7 over here, and the 0 goes over there. Then I've got 79 over there. Then I've got 37, there's the 3 for the 30, and 7. Then I've got 67, so there's the 6 and the 7. Then I've got 92 over there, 62 over here, another 62 over here, 45 is over here, 22 is over here, 25, 17, 41 is over there, 56, then the 1 over here, remember if it's just a plain unit, it, then the number of 10s is 0, so it's going to go in this row over here, so the 1 goes over there, 36 is going to go over here, 35, and remember, all of the, each time I am just writing the last digit over here. I'm not writing the whole number, I'm just writing the last digit. Then the 65 is going to go over here, I put the 5 there. 62, I put a 2 over here. 69, I put a 9 over here. 71, I put a 1 over there. 85 is 85 over there. 45, 40, and I put the 5 over here. 67, there's 16, I put the 7 over there. 54, so I have 15, I put the 4 over here. 33, 30, and I put the 3 over here. 23, 20, and I put the 3 over here. 54, there's 50, and I put 4 over here. And then 50, there's 5, 50, and I put 0 over here. If it's a 0, you must make sure you do write that 0. We don't leave it out. Okay, now once I've got my rough version, I'm now going to go and put the do the neat version. Okay, so to do the neat version, I look at each of the intervals and I need to make sure that I put them in ascending order from smallest to biggest and I need to make sure that I write them neatly in columns. Okay, so the first one, I only have one digit there, it's a one, so it's just going to go one like that. Then over here, I've got a seven, also it's the only one. Now in the, the 20s interval, I've got 2 and 5 and 3, so now I need to make sure I put those in ascending order. So first I have 2, then I have 3, and then I have 5. Right, now we go on to the 30s. Here I've got 7 and 6 and 5 and 3, so in ascending order it's going to be 3, and then 5, and then 6, and then 7. Okay, and see I'm doing them in columns like this underneath each other. Then in the 40s, I've got a 1 and two fives. Then in the 50s row, I've got a 0, two fours, and a 6. 
Then in the 60s row, I've got a 1. I've got three 2s. I've got a 5. Then I've got two 7s. And I've got a 9. Then in the 70s row, I've got a 0. I've got a 1. And I've got a 9. Then in the 80s row, I've got 5 and 6, and in the 90s, I've got 2. Okay, so this is now the neat version of my stem and leaf plot. So first I put in my title, then I do a rough version, just in pencil on the side over here, which I can then use to do the neat version where it's going to all be in ascending order, nicely lined up in columns and everything. Okay. Right, now that we've done that, we're going to go and answer the questions. Okay, the first question is, we need to find the mean. Okay, so over here, to work out the mean, remember the mean is the average. We take all the values, we add them up, and we divide by the number of values. Okay, so I'm going to take all the values. Now, I can do it either from the original data that I was given, or I can do it from here as well. Okay, remember, if I'm going to do it from here, each of these, I can't just say 1 plus 7 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5, because the 1 doesn't necessarily just represent 1. The 7 doesn't necessarily just rep represent 7. Over here, it's the 1 is actually just 1 because it's got 0 tens, so it's 1 plus. But this 7 is actually 17 plus. This 2 is 22. This 3 is 23. And this 5 is 25 plus. Then over here, I've got 3, which is 33, plus 35, plus 36, plus 37, plus. Then over here, I've got 41, plus 45, plus another 45, plus. Then over here, 50, plus 54 plus another 54, plus 56. Okay, then over here I've got 61, plus 62, plus another 62, and another 62, plus 65, plus 67, plus another 67, and plus 69. Then I've got over here 70, plus 71, plus 79, plus, then I've got over here 85, plus 86, and finally plus 92, equals. And all of that gives me 1,572. Which we can then divide by the number of values that there were to start with. And I can find out how many values there were by looking again at the original data over there, or I can look over here by counting all of the leaves. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So there were 30 values altogether. So if I take this and I divide it by 30, that gives us 52.4. So to work out our mean, we take all the values, we add them up, and we divide by the number of values. But remember, if you're doing it from the stem and leaf plot, you need to make sure that you use the stem and the leaf together for each of the values. Okay, so that's 52.4 marks. Right, the next question, we need to find the median. Okay, so the median, remember, is the middle value. Now, when we were doing mean, median, and mode in the last lesson, we were working with smaller data sets. Now we're working with a bigger data set. So it helps to work out where the median is going to be. So we know we've already worked out that there are 30 values over here in our data. So remember to work out the position of the median, we take the number of values, so it's 30, plus 1, and we divide that by 2. Okay, so 30 plus 1 divided by 2 is going to give you 15 and a half. Okay, so what that means is that my median is going to be between the 15th and the 16th values. Okay, 
Now, when we made our stem and leaf plot, because it's all in order, I this that is one of the benefits of doing a stem and leaf plot is that it puts your data in numerical order for you. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it straight away. I don't need to go and arrange it in order because it's already arranged in order. I can go and find the 15th and the 16th values by working from the, I'm only looking at the leaves, okay, by working from the top left and going down and right. So I'm going to go one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. I'm looking for the 15th and 16th values. So 15 and 16. So now remember this four means 54. It's not just four, it's 54. So my 15th value is 54 plus my 16th value is 56. And I need to find the number that's halfway between those. So I can add them and divide by two and that will give me 55. You can also just work out that the number halfway between 54 and 56 is 55. Okay, by thinking about it logically. Right, so that is our median is 55 marks. That's the middle of all the data. Then the next thing we need to do is find the mode. Okay, now remember the mode is the value that appears the most frequently. Okay, or that has the highest frequency. So if we look over here, the mode, I'm going to be looking for any value that I have the most of. So I only have one there. There's only one there. Here, they all are individual. Those are all individual. Here, I've got two fives next to each other. So these are both 45. So I've got two 45s. That could potentially be a mode unless something else uh, appears more often. Over here, I've also got two next to each other. This is two fours. They both represent 54. Then over here, I've got three twos next to each other. So that means that those can't be modes because now I've got three that are the same. This is 62, 62, and 62. There, over here, I've got two next to each other and there's nothing else that's more than that. So my mode is going to be 62. Okay. The next thing is the modal class. Okay, now the modal class is something we haven't done before because when we were doing... Uh, summarizing data before, we weren't doing it with grouped data. Now the modal class, just like mode means a value that has the highest frequency, the modal class is the class or group or interval that has the highest frequency. So the modal class is going to be the interval that has the most values in it. So if you look at this now with your seven leaf plot, you can see by looking at it that this one has more than any of the others. So this is the one that has the highest frequency. This is our modal class, but now what do we call it? I can't call it six because what does the six mean? The six doesn't just mean six. The six means the interval from 60 to 69. Okay, so when you're doing the modal class from a stem leaf diagram, you have to say what that means. And in this case, it means 60 to 69. So remember the six means six tens, okay? And it can hold anything, any value that has six tens in it. So it can be six, 60 or 61 or 62, anything up to 69. So that is our interval over there, 60 to 69. So when we ask for the modal class, we don't just write down six, we take that six and we make it into 60 to 69. Okay, the next thing we need to do is find the range. Okay, now the range, remember, is the maximum minus the minimum. So the maximum value you're going to find in your stem and leaf plot right down at the bottom, as far right as you can go. So in this case, I can't go any further right than this. So this is two, but remember it doesn't, isn't just two, it's 92. So I'm going to take that maximum value 92 and subtract the minimum value, so now I'm going to look right at the top as far left as I can go. And in this case, it is one. And it's one with zero ten, so it's just one. So it's 92 minus one. And that gives me 91 marks. So the, the mode was 62 marks. And the modal class is 60 to 69 marks. Okay, so now you're going to do one for yourself.
Okay, so here you've got the heights in centimeters of learners in the class, and you need to represent this data in a stem and leaf plot, and then you're going to answer questions on it after that. But first, I'm going to give you time to do the stem and leaf plot. So I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this. Okay, so let's go through what that should look like. So over here, this is what your stem and leaf plot should look like. You should have had your rough version over here. And then you should have found that your stem would hold 13, 14, 15, and 16. Because the lowest value out of all that data was 130, which has 13 tens. If you look at the digits not including that very last digit, if you look at the other digits, you get a 13. So that is going to give you the first value in your stem. And then you go from there, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, and then you should have ended up with 0, 3, 8, 9 in the first row. You should have had 0, 3, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8, 9, 9 in the second row, in the 14 row, that's the 140s. Then in the 150s, you should have had 0, 2, 4, 5, 7, and in the 160s, you should have had 0047. Okay, so that's what your stem and leaf plot should look like. Now you're going to answer some questions based on that stem and leaf plot. I'm going to give you a few seconds to answer each question. The first one, what is the range of the learner's heights in this class? Question B, find the median. Question C, find the mode. Question D, what is the modal class? Question E, 
calculate the mean. Okay, question F. How many learners have heights in the interval 150 to 159? Question G. How many more learners have heights in the interval 140 to 149? than in the interval 160 to 169. Question H. How many learners are at least 150 centimeters tall? Question I. How many learners are less than 160 centimeters tall? Question J. What is the height of the shortest learner in the class? And then question K. What is the height of the tallest learner in the class? Okay, so let's go through all of those questions quickly. A, what is the range of the learner's heights in this class? Now remember to work out range, you have to take the maximum, which to find the maximum, you're going to look at the bottom right. So that's going to be this one over here. This is 167. And you're going to subtract the minimum, which is at the top left. So that's this one over here, it's 130. So it's 167 minus 130, and that should have given you 37 centimeters for the range. Okay, then question B, find the median. Now, first of all, we need to know where the median is going to be in this data. So let's find out how many data values there are altogether. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. So there are twenty-four values altogether. So to work out the position of the median, I'm going to take 24, I'm going to add 1, and then I'm going to divide by 2. And that gives me 12 and a half, which means that my median is going to be between the 12th and the 13th 
values. So I need to go and find the 12th and 13th values, starting at the top left and working my way right and down. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So both of them are 8s. They represent 148. So it's 148 and 148. So if I take those and I add them and divide by 2, I'm still going to get 148. When the two values that are in the middle are the same, you don't actually have to work it out because the median is going to be the same as both of them. Okay, so it's 148 centimeters. Right, then question C. Find the mode. The mode is the value that has the highest frequency. So in this one over here, the mode is going to be 148 because there are three of those. There isn't anything else that has such a high frequency. So it's going to be 148 centimeters. Next question, what is the modal class? The modal class, remember, is the interval that has the highest frequency. So now we're looking at the whole interval, this whole interval, that whole interval, and that whole interval. The one that has the highest frequency is this one over here. It has the most numbers in it. Okay, so the modal class, I'm going to find out what it is, looking over here at the stem, which says 14, but I can't just write down 14. Remember, the 14 represents the 140s. It's 140 to 149 centimeters. Okay, then we need to calculate the mean for question E. So to calculate the mean, you're going to add up all of the values and divide by the number of values. Now remember, there were 24 altogether. So when you add them all up using the calculator, you should have found that you got 3,565. And then when you divide that by 24, you should have got 148.54 centimeters. So that's what you should have got for your mean. Question F, how many learners have heights in the interval 150 to 159? So now we're looking over here. This is the interval 150 to 159. So how many learners are there? There's one, two, three, four, five in that interval. So there are five learners. Question G, how many more learners have heights in the interval 140 to 149 than in the interval 160 to 169. So first we need to go and find out how many there are in this interval, the 140s interval. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I've got 11 in this interval. Now I need to find out how many there are in the 160s interval. That's this one over here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm subtracting 4 to find out the difference between them to find out how many more this one is than that. And that gives you seven learners. So this one has seven more learners than that. Question H, how many learners are at least 150 centimeters tall? So remember 150 centimeters, that's going to be the beginning of the 150 to 159 interval. So that's over here, 150. So it's these ones and those because they can be more than 150. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine learners that are at least 150 centimeters tall. And then question I, how many learners are less than 160 centimeters tall? So 160 is over here. So I need to know how many are less than that. So that's going to be the people that are in these intervals. So I'm going to count all of those. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there are 20 learners that are less than 160 centimeters tall. Right, then question J, what is the height of the shortest learner in the class? The shortest learner is going to be the one that has the lowest height, that is this one over here. So it's 130 centimeters. And then what is the height of the tallest learner in the class for question K? The tallest learner is going to be the one with the biggest height. That's going to be at the bottom right. That's the seven over here, which represents 167. So the height of the tallest learner is 167 centimeters. Right, so that's how you do a regular stem and leaf plot. Now we're going to look at back-to-back -back stem and leaf plots. Now a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot can be used to compare two sets of data. Let's have a look at an example over here. So over here, I've got the monthly rainfall in two cities in millimeters. This is city A and this is city B. Okay, so I can compare the data for two cities by doing a back-to-back -back stem and leaf. Now, there are a couple of things you need to be aware of when you're doing a back-to-back -back stem and leaf. First of all, 
the, the data that's on the right hand side of the stem is going to be exactly the same as normal. It goes in ascending order like with the other ones we were doing, okay? But on the left hand side of your stem, the group of data that's on the left hand side is going to be backwards, okay? So it hugs the stem. You can see that all of these leaves are up close to the stem. They're not from this side, they're from this side, and they are actually in descending order. If you go from left to right, it's descending order. The smallest values are closest to the stem, and the largest values are furthest from the stem. Okay, so when you're doing a back-to-back -back stem and leaf, the right-hand side is normal. The left-hand side is backwards, okay? So it hugs the stem, it needs to be aligned to the right, it needs to be close to the stem, and the smallest values must be closest to the stem, the largest values must, must be furthest from the stem. So the values are going to be in descending order on the left-hand side. Okay, so now let's have a look at an example that you're going to do. Two groups of learners wrote a test out of 50. Their marks are listed below. So here you've got the marks for group A and the marks for group B. You need to represent this data in a stem and leaf plot and then answer questions after that. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly get you started with a stem and leaf plot so that you know how to get started when you're doing a back-to-back -back like this. Okay, so over here I've got my data for the two groups, the, the marks for the two groups, and here I've got the structure for my stem and leaf. Now first I need to find out what the numbers are going to be in my stem. Okay, so remember we are going to look for the smallest value to find out what the first number is going to be in the stem. So over here, the smallest number that I have here in group A is 17. But remember, these both have to be on the same plot. So I need to make sure that group B doesn't have any numbers that are smaller. And if I look at group B, I do have numbers that are smaller. I've got my smallest number here is one. So I'm going to be basing my first interval on the smallest number in group B because it's the smallest out of all of it, okay? So one, remember we need to look and see how many tens that has. So the number one has zero tens. So my first number in my stem is going to be zero. And then I'm going to have one and two and three and four okay then once i've done that i'm going to then go and do my rough version of my leaves so 35 but now over here this is group a so i'm going to be doing group a's things over here so i'll just do the rough version over there so 35 is going to go over there then 28 is going to go over here 20 0 is going to go over there 48 the 8 is going to go over there, and so on. Then when I do the B, the group Bs, I'll be doing it on this side over here. And their data is going to go on this side. Group A's data is going to go on that side. Okay, so now I'm going to let you finish that off. And then we'll go through it, and then you'll do the questions. So I'm going to give you three minutes to do that stem and leaf.
Okay, so let's take a look and see what your stem and leaf plot should look like. So over here, you should have had a title. You could call it marks of learners in two groups or something along those lines. You should have done a rough version for both group A and group B. And then when you did the neat version, you should have found that for group A, in the zero tens group, there was nothing. Then in the tens group, you had seven. In the twenties group, you had zero, three, eight, eight, and nine. In the thirties group, you should have had five, eight, 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 nine, and nine. And in the 40s group, you should have had 3, 4, and 8. Then for group B, in the 0, 10s group, you should have had 1, 2, 5, and 7. In the 10s group, you should have had 3, 7, and 8. In the 20s group, you should have had 2, 4, 6, 7, 7, and 8. And in the 30s group, you should have had 5 and 6. And then in the 40s group, there's nothing. Okay, so that's what you should have for your stem and leaf plot. Now you're going to answer some questions about it. I'm going to give you a few seconds to answer each question. Here's the first one. Question A, find the modal class for each group. Okay, question B, find the median for each group. Question C, calculate the mean for group A. Question D, calculate the mean for group B. Question E, how many learners in each group obtained at least 20 marks? Question F, which group performed better in the test overall? Okay, so now let's go through all of those questions. The first one, question A, find the modal class for each group. So first let's have a look at group A. So looking at group A, we're looking for the interval that has the highest frequency or the most values. That is this one over here. This is the 30s. Okay, so that's from 30 to 39. So our modal class for group A is 30 to 39. Then for group B, if you look over here, 
the one that has the highest, the interval that has the highest frequency or the most values is the 20s over here. So for group B, the modal class is 20 to 29 marks. Okay, question B. Find the median for each group. Now, first of all, both groups have the same number of learners in them. So, but you need to find out how many that is in order to be able to work out where the median is going to be. So we're going to work out the position of the median. But first, let's count how many there are. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And if you count this, you'll also find that there's 15. So in both groups, there are 15 learners. So to work out the position of the median, we're going to take that 15 and we're going to add 1 and divide by 2, and that will give you 8, which means that the 8th value will be where our median is going to be. So we're going to go for group A. Now we're counting from here, but now remember group A, because it's on the left-hand side, is backwards. So we're going to be counting, still going downwards, but from right to left instead of from left to right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight. Remember, I'm looking for the eighth value. So that's this one over here. So remember, this eight represents 38. So for group A, the median is 38 marks. Now let's have a look at group B. It's also going to be the eighth value, but we're starting over here and we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is this two over here, which represents 22. So for group B, my median is 22 marks. Right, question C. Calculate the mean for group A. So for group A, we're going to be adding up all of the values and dividing by 15 because there are 15 all together. Okay, but remember, the 7 isn't just 7, it's 17. So it's 17 plus 20 plus 23 plus 28 plus 28 plus 29 and so on. You should have found for group A that the total is 507 which you then divide by 15 to give you a mean of three of 33.8 marks. Okay, so that's what you should have got for the mean for group A. Then for question D, you should do the same thing, but for group B. So we're adding them up. So it's 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 7, because there are 0 tens with those. Then plus 13 plus 17 plus 18 and so on. You should have found that your total for group B was 288. And then you should divide that by 15 to get your mean of 19.2 marks. Then, question E. How many learners in each group obtained at least 20 marks? So 20 is over here. This is where the 20s start. So everything in this interval on. Okay, so over here, I've got in group A, which I'm going to do first, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 in group A. Then in group B, I'm also starting at the 20s over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 learners in group B. Okay, so that's how many learners in each group got at least 20 marks. And then the last question, which group performed better in the test overall? Now, you can look at the stem and leaf over here and you can see that group A's marks are generally all grouped further down on the stem and leaf at the higher values. And group B's marks are all further up at the lower values. Okay, so group A generally performed better than group B did. And that is how we work with stem and leaf plots. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.